Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time since I've done a wrap up. So this is not just a February wrap up. It is a catch up wrap up because I need to wrap up December, January and February. I talked about this a little bit before in my TBR video, which should have be already be up. But basically, like I just kind of went through this phase where I wasn't reading as much and I wasn't putting pressure on myself to read. And I just kind of needed that. And I feel reinvigorated now to come back to booktube. Like, you know, things like this. Like, you're not always going to be 100% motivated. And I think it's okay to acknowledge that and okay to just, like, do what you can when you can. And... Just roll with it so that's what i am doing and i finally just feel like more excited about reading and all of these books that i have coming up to read and just like being able to better balance my life basically but because i did not film a wrap-up for a while it is time to talk about all the books that i read and honestly there's not like a super lot but like it's okay i also just talked uh watched chloe's wrap-up video in which she talked that she hates filming wrap-ups and like I sat there and I was like wow like I feel like this too like I always dread filming them and I put a lot of pressure on myself and I don't think like wrap-ups are anyone's favorite videos to film like if they are like good for you but I think um, the longer we are in this community the more pressure we put on ourselves to have like these super professional reviews and like they don't have to be if i review a book on goodreads and i'm even just like writing out my thoughts in a review like i just sit there and i'm always like i don't feel like i'm saying this the best way that i can and even though i like want to put my thoughts out there it, it's hard sometimes to just like fully express what you think and i like wrap-ups for the sense of that sometimes if i'm just talking about a book casually my thoughts come across better than when i'm sitting down to write them like i'm not a writer like i feel like my reviews are like okay but they're not like the, the most well-written things like i don't read over them many times um but i do use those reviews to base my wrap-ups off of so that i have like something to sit there and you know like some sort of guide to go by so you know it's just like trying to find a balance and like the way that i want to do this that works the best for me and my life and like i do like writing those reviews and i do like filming wrap-ups but sometimes it's just like a lot of pressure and like they're just like annoying because they take a long time to film if you are just like trying to say too much so i think i just want to go with what feels natural and the way that i would best talk about a book to like a friend and just say the things that i want to say about a book and not spend too much time on it if i don't like have too much to say like it doesn't have to be super put together or whatever like it can just be my thoughts my reflections on my experience and like have that be that and thank you chloe for bringing up that discussion because i think everyone kind of dreads filming wrap-ups but no one like talks about it because they are such like a staple in the community because like that's the main kind of place where you talk about books but like it can just be like this pressure to like have to be like presenting yourself in a certain way so the First book that I read in December is A Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. This is my copy that I got from Book of the Month YA, which if you had seen, Book of the Month YA is now just merging with Book of the Month. So it's just going to be one service now, but I am still a rep for them. So my link is in the description. Yeah, so I've been getting super into K-pop. And so like I felt like sometimes reading fiction is a really good way to get familiar with a culture that you are not familiar with yet because it makes it fun so like i learn a lot about korean culture from k-pop but i was like you want to know what this is like kind of brings in some mythology and other stuff that i might not know about so i wanted to give it a read and i've heard really good things about it and yes i thoroughly enjoyed my read of this book and it did end up on my list top 10 books of 2019 so go check out that video 18 year old gu myung has a secret she is half gu ho which means that she is a nine-tailed fox and has to eat the souls of men to survive. So she has a soft spot for humans and with the help of a shaman, tries to kill only bad men to survive, so tracks down murderers, all that good stuff. However, one day a boy, Ji Hoon, is trapped in the woods by a goblin and so she decides to intervene and help him and in the process, she loses her fox bead, which is her Gumiho life force. Without this fox bead, she will die. 
And when Myung and Jihoon next meet, they are definitely drawn to each other, but their romance stops really before it can start as Myung's efforts to restore her fox speed by the next full moon draws them into a decades old war, which forces Myung to choose between her immortal life or Jihoon's. And I've heard that this is also like, if you're a fan of K dramas, you will like this. I have not watched a K drama yet. I'm pretty bad with TV shows. I spend a lot of time reading and just like watching YouTube, so I don't necessarily watch TV shows super fast or super a lot of them. So I haven't watched a K-drama yet, but because of the style that this was written in, it was really fun and enjoyable. The pacing was really fast. There was always something dramatic that was happening. I really felt for the characters, like you learn a lot about Myung and Jihoon and their familial relationships and how Myung has this strained relationship with her mother and trying to please her as a gumiho and then Jihoon having this mother that abandoned him and he lives with his grandma and how he really cares about his grandma and tries to like do everything for her. It was really touching. I really like when novels not only have like a romance but really focus on the family relationships. I think it can just like really pull at the heartstrings and this book does a really good job of exploring those relationships and also in the context of a different culture where family structures and relationships are a little bit different than what we experience here in the US. So I thought that was really cool and really educational. There were a lot of quotes that made me emotional just because those were really pulled the heartstrings with the parent-child dynamics. Like it was just a really like family-oriented novel but also the romance was really cute and I think it's a really cool contemporary fantasy which I find or urban fantasy which I find myself more and more drawn to these days where we have these fantasy creatures set in a modern day world and I think it can bring in a lot of fun and unique elements to a fantasy story and that is why this book ended up on my top books of 2019 list so of course it was five stars. Next, we have Shadow Frost by Coco Ma, which I actually left in Florida because I read it when I was in Florida and I didn't have space. <laughs> Shadow Frost takes place in the kingdom of Exaria and there's this demon tormenting the lands. Aster and Fallonheart is the heir to Exaria and she wants to set out after this monster that is tormenting her kingdom and so she takes a brigade of her most trusted friends and they set out on a mission to hunt down this monster. They also unearth a plot in the course of hunting down the demon that digs it deeper than they thought. And this book focuses on some elemental magic but instead of like the regular elements there's nine elements and so it's like you can have it's been a while since I read this but it's like you could not be like ice power or like light power and like you can have like all of them or you can have just like two or three of them. So it's pretty cool to see like elemental magic with a spin on that where there's just many more elements that you can have in the way, different ways that you can inherit and get power. And this was a 4.5 stars for me. I really liked the characters. I thought that there was a good cast of characters and I really enjoyed seeing the relationship between Astrid and Quinlan develop. Like they were very, a lot of banter between them and just seeing them like battle each other for their skills. And then we have some side characters that I also really felt for. It was like a fun adventure that we were out there in the world and trying to defeat this demon and like it sounds like a very traditional fantasy style story but I thought there were some really cool twists and turns that were put in here and that I wasn't expecting and so I'm really looking forward to reading the next book and I think that this was a really really strong debut. So those are actually the only books that I read in December. I only read two which is wild because other months uh, in 2019 I was reading like 15 books but uh that didn't happen <laughs> I like I just like hit a wall I think I was just like I just don't feel like reading right now and like that's okay it happens in life like if you love something you don't have to be like totally 100% into it all the time you still love it like you can take a break from it and come back to it so yeah I just kind of like slowed down my pace of reading and in January the first thing that I read was actually the BTS webtoon Save Me um and this is the most beautiful moment in life part zero. So I love BTS and one of the things that really got me into them as a group was the Bang Ten universe or the BU which is this series of storylines that weave through all of their music videos and now they with every album these ones are my favorite colors so I'll show you. So with every album comes these little notes and it has the thing in it and obviously it's in Korean so I can't read it but they've really made their world their storyline like this whole expansive thing and it's so fun so this webtoon was released in April of last year 
it is the prequel so it ties into the music videos and there's like hours of content of music videos to watch i've watched it many times over because i watched it for the first time um when i was first getting into bts and i'm like oh my god i need to consume everything that is involved with this i love when there are like involved stories and it is just so dark <laughs> please be advised before you read this that it is very dark it involves like suicide murder mental health like so many things okay so <laughs> anyways I would suggest if you are interested to watch all of the related content first then read the webtoon then read the notes then go back and watch the content again and again and again and just see what more you can pick up every time because there's just so much symbolism and layers and like this is a project that is worked on by many many people BTS and all of the staff and like behind the scenes like the directors and music videos like just so many people this big creative effort and I think it's really paid off and like the storyline is still continuing with their new album Map of the Soul 7 they did you know release a new notes pamphlet so and I think that the storyline like the one to get like kind of the basis of what's happening to each boy is to watch the I Need You music video. That's kind of the first one that lays out what's going on. But there are seven boys, they're best friends and their fates are intertwined through the good times together but also the tough times. So each boy is dealing with their own thing that is going very, very wrong in their life. And we have Sok Jin who keeps waking up on the day of April 11th and he basically has to go and try and save each boy from their deaths or something terribly wrong that's going on with them and every time he messes up it's like this glass shattering effect and the loop starts over. So with the time travel aspect it makes it somewhat pretty difficult to follow the story because there's many different loops and threads and like trying to figure out where each thing goes to me it's like a big puzzle and it makes it a lot of fun but i found that this prequel comic first of all the illustrations are gorgeous like some of my favorite illustrations like i think they chose a really good artist for this project and the prequel comic really illuminated a lot to me in like the structure of how these music videos are working. Like I didn't know necessarily about the time loops until I read them in the comic and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. That's why things sometimes like don't match up in the music videos. And like this has been going on since 2015. This is a very elaborate project. It really pulls at your heartstrings because a lot of the things that these characters are dealing with are just like so heart-wrenchingly like emotional, like they've been abandoned, they're suicidal, like uh, just abuse like it's just it's terrible and you like want to root for them so bad and like to see them like getting close and close each time and then have it reset like it just it hurts it hurts but it's seriously like a work of art and I love it so so much that's why I read it again because I was actually hanging out with Maddie we went to see 17 together in January it was so much fun and we were watching music videos and I'm like let me show you the bts universe and she's like okay and then like we started watching and she's getting to the story and she's like i can't believe you did this to me because now now i'm into it and i'm like that's that's how it goes <laughs> yeah i will leave links to like a playlist that has all of the related content in it if you are interested um this is definitely one of the things that really got me into them as group because when i you have this interactive con content where you just need to like think about it like it really pulls me in as you can see so next i read a manga which is yona of the dawn a story and art by mizuho kusanagi and this is a shoujo manga i want to say but kind of like shonen because has some action adventure i ever since joining booktube have decided i want to get more into manga because I, I never really read it in my life and i think it's a lot of Fun. and so yona of the dawn when i heard maddie talking about this in one of her manga videos she has a few that are really good check them out princess of paperback manga just search that you'll find something i was like wow like i think that this is gonna be really good so I, me and keely decided to buddy read and then we bought this volume for each other for christmas because we're we share a brain cell like that so we have princess yona who is living an ideal life and she's doted on by her father and protected by her faithful guard hack and she cherishes the time spent with the man she loves, Su Wan, but everything changes on her 16th birthday when tragedy strikes her family. And from there, she has to deal with the shock of dealing with a loved one's murder and having a fight for her life. And with Hack's help, her bodyguard, they flee from the palace. So I ended up giving this first installment five stars. I'm really enjoying reading about Princess Yona. Like, I love princess fairy tale esque things. So it's really fun to see a manga with this setting. There is like one weird romantic thing. Thing in here that's apparently common with shoujo manga uh, but i just decided to like look past that because it's like 
not really an option after this. It just sounds very vague, but just know it was like kind of weird, but like it's it's fine. Like it's not like a thing. So I was like, okay, still five stars because I really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to picking up the rest of the series. Next, I read The Queen's Assassin by Melissa Day at La Cruz, and this arc was sent to me by Penguin Teen. So thank you so much, Penguin. And I actually passed it along to someone else, so I don't actually physically have the arc with me anymore. I am, if you look on my Twitter, trying to pass along arcs that I don't need because I they just take up a lot of space, especially if it's a book that I don't think I'll reread isn't like cherished by me so I would want to give other people opportunities to read them so I'm going to be doing giveaways from time to time on my Twitter for arcs at uh, the person I gave this arc to like hopefully it has been mailed out by now but like it, I'm really slow at mailing things out because I the post office hours just like don't line up with my work schedule so I'm um, sorry about that. <laughs> so Calden Holt is the kingdom of Renovia's secret weapon. He is the queen's assassin and he is bound to her by magic to hunt down the Danian scrolls which which have the history of all magical history on them. Shadow has been training her whole life to follow in the footsteps of her mother and aunts and become a high-ranking member of the Shadow Guild and become an assassin and she also has been learning to control her powers in secret. And when a surprise attack brings Shadow and Cal together, they're forced to team up as assassin and apprentice to escape the threats that are coming at them all sides. So I give this book 2.5 stars. That's like a pretty low rating for me. I'm typically a pretty high rater, but mm. so the thing that really drove me crazy with this book is that when we were reading from Shadow's perspective, it was first person. And when we read from Cal's perspective, it was third person. And I get that that was there to I guess differentiate their voices but it it drove me bananas like I could not deal with the book written in two different perspectives like that like the first and the third person like I was not a fan it threw me out of the story every time and I think it was like first person present and then like third person past too so it was like the tense and the person was different and like I just couldn't deal with it I'm like this is just like not working like if you were going to do that in a book like it really needs to like have some sort of reason that it would work and there was just no reason for it like it would have been fine to have two first person present perspectives and the story still could have been told the same like I just don't understand stylistically why that choice was made other than maybe the characters didn't have strong enough voices to like have their own like I don't know like I it drove me insane it was just like so dark so dark and, like I usually like assassin stories with royalty and stuff like that but like I, I don't know like do you ever just like read a book and it feels very like surface level like things are happening and you feel like they're just being told that they're happening and you don't know why like there's no like good reason to back it up by like the characters personalities or like any sort of like lore or world like things would just like happen like there was this like person in the book and then like after all these events they were like oh yeah by the way she was a witch and it was like what and then like shadow is supposed to have these powers and the magic is just like never explained and then like the big plot twist in the end was just so obvious and i don't care if i can guess a plot twist but like and i usually can't guess them because i'm just like i don't even try to guess but i'm like it happened and I was like really like come like come on like, it was just so obvious and it was just like so like ugh, ugh. and then the romance was just like insta love to a T it was literally like they were together for three days and he was like you're the light of my life and I was like okay like I don't mind things that are like a little a little insta lovey if it's like you know that they like each other and they form some bond over like time blah 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 but he was literally like they barely had inter any interactions and all of a sudden he's like you're the light of my lo life i love you so much blah 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 and i'm like but you don't even know her or maybe you don't know her because she doesn't have a personality because like neither of you but like <sighs> i don't know i just for me i felt like the bones of a good novel were there but like nothing about it was fleshed out enough that it worked for me and I just had to give it 2.5 stars because I just honestly didn't enjoy it. Next, I read The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. I actually got an arc of this from the publisher, so thank you so much. But I have since passed on that arc to a friend and now I have a finished copy. I met Trisha Levenseller last week at a book signing and she signed my copy for me. It says you deserve a crown. Thank you. I do. And I'm such a big fan of Trisha Levenseller's books. I've loved every single one of them. Uh, this one is no different. This one might be my favorite. 
and it it says in the dedication i can't think of anyone more deserving of the slytherin romance it is such a slytherin romance and it's so fun and there's a quote in the beginning david salvatore said it's cool not growing old i like being the eternal stud david salvatore vampire diaries season one episode four so Alessandra is tired of being overlooked and so she has a plan for power. She is going to woo the Shadow King, marry him, kill him, and then take his power for her own. And no one knows the extent of the Shadow King's power except there is a law that everyone must be at least five feet away from him at all times. Um, Alessandra comes to the palace and she knows what she deserves and she's going to do everything that she can to seduce him. However, she's not the only one that is trying to kill the king and she needs to marry him to ensure her place on the throne before he is killed by someone else. And after all, who is better for a Shadow King than a cunning villainous queen? oh my stars i fell absolutely in love with this book like it made me want to reread all for love and zeller's books honestly like it was so good it's sex positive first of all because alessandra has like all these lovers and they like give her nice things and she's like just like so empowering to other the other females that she befriends in this book she's like yeah like sleep with who you want like yes yeah, like you go girl <laughs> and then um but also like understanding of like someone that wants to wait so i thought that that was really good and sex positive in all aspects and the romance was just the tension between them was so good and because this law exists like they cannot touch for most of the novel so like oh it's just like the witty banter between the two of them and like the attraction between them was palpable like trisha levisler just writes these like bantering witty romances so well and i absolutely love them i mean like alessandra is just cunning and like villainous and like she does not apologize for who she is right off the bat like on the first page we learned that like she got dumped by her first love so she killed him and like it was great <laughs> uh i just it's so good and then like all the side characters are so fun and like there's just a lot packed into this novel it is a standalone but it is like my new favorite standalone fantasy romance like oh my god i cannot talk about how much i love this book um, enough like it is just so fun and awesome and i think that you all should read it because it is the best next i read the stars we steal by alexa dawn i picked this up at ala and it is basically the Bachelorette in Space, but more specifically, it is a retelling of Persuasion by Jane Austen in Space. And so we follow Princess Leonie, or Leo, who is heir to a faded European spaceship. Everyone lives in space now because Earth is uninhabitable. And every five years, they have the Valg season where they all come together to try and pair up with one another to keep the human population like alive. However, Leo's family is bankrupt and so she is trying her father is pushing her to find a rich husband however her childhood first love that she could not marry because he was poor has come back and now he is a whiskey runner and super rich and he is the catch of the valg season um, leo is caught in the middle of all of this battling her feelings with trying to take care of her family and this book ended up giving 4.5 stars. It was really fun. The characters were all really great. It was super easy to get into and fly through. I adored Leo. She was really resourceful and she was really trying to provide for her family and find ways other than marriage to provide for them and get them out of bankruptcy and to help them survive. She's practical and reliable and will sacrifice for her family and I thought that was really admirable of her. And she comes up with her own inventions and I just think that that's like really admirable. I really, really liked that aspect of the story. Oh my god, it was so much fun. Like the drama was just a lot of fun because we have this like dating situation where like everyone's trying to vie for a partner and like we have like the speed dating events and like all these other events and it just made it a lot of fun. And there's obviously like a lot of complicated feelings as characters start to pair off. So that was really cool. Overall, I just thought that this book was really fun and really cute. And if you're looking for a good sci-fi novel to absolutely fly through, I highly suggest this one. <laughs> Next, I read The Notes, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Part 1 by BTS. Um, and this is basically all of these guys that i showed translated into english and put together in a book for the love yourself series it was a lot it was five stars i pretty much talked about this storyline already before i talked about the webtoon but like yes i finally read the notes and like i feel like i just learned a lot more about the story and like i'm just so blown away every time and i actually started to really like be able to piece together where i think certain music videos and highlight reels and stuff fit in to the 
larger storyline and so i'm hoping that like they release another translated one for the notes in the map the soul series so i can continue reading on with this and i do think it's going to be a k-drama too so yes i loved it of course next i read credence by penelope douglas um yeah i gave it one star and like that's that's all i really want to say that's all i really want to say okay here I have an ARC that I received from Bloomsbury, so thank you so much Bloomsbury for sending this my way. This is Havenfall by Sarah Holland, and this is out today, March 3rd. Havenfall is the story of a place that is basically a waypoint between different realms. We have Haven, Bryn, uh, Fordenkill, and Solaria, which has been sealed off. And every summer, Maddie spends time at Havenfall with her uncle who runs it in, and she hopes one day to take it over. During her summer, she usually hangs out with Brecken, who is the Fjordan kill shoulder that she is in love with and is her best friend. And she uses this place to escape from the tragedies of her life, mainly that her little brother was seemingly murdered by her mother. However, this summer, things go a little bit differently. A dead body is found on the premises and all chaos breaks loose. Maddie's uncle is injured and Brecken disappears and all this responsibility is thrust upon Maddie and she must deal with running the inn before she is ready. So I ended up giving this one a five stars. It was a really refreshing contemporary fantasy. I think the idea of a place with doorways of different worlds allows you to bring in a lot of different characters and a lot of different worlds and leaves a lot of space for like fun world building. Like every world had characters that like had specific traits and like specific magic and it was really cool to see. And then of course we have Maddie who has to deal with having this responsibility thrust on her before she's ready and I think that the portrayal of her was very realistic to how a 16 year old would react when like they are told they have to run something like this and one of the mysteries is that Solaria was closed off because there was this war and there are these shape-shifting monsters and the door is now like open and one of them has escaped and is terrorizing the inn and so they kind of have to figure out like how the door opened who opened it and who's doing what and there's just like the mystery of these people like is really well woven into the novel and like when you find out the reveal of like what really happened it, it just like pays off very well um and in a way that you don't see coming so i thought that that was a very well crafted thread within this book and i thought all the side characters were really well fleshed out and had really good storylines i also liked seeing maddie's internal struggle because she is bisexual and she has this crush on Brecken, like she's in love with him, childhood friend, but then he disappears and then she also is battling a growing attraction to Taya who is the new hire of the summer and she um, is like this motorcycle riding like tough chick and like there's just, she's pulled in different directions and I thought that the rom that it was done well. Um, like this love triangle of like seeing Maddie internally struggle with her feelings for both people. And I just thought it was a really smart novel that brought together contemporary fantasy and mystery and I am looking forward to the next installment. And to finish off the month of February, I read Yona of the Dawn Volume 2, slowly making my way through these. In this one, we see Pack and Yona kind of like they've escaped and they're going off and into a different place. And I think that in this one, we see Yona come into herself a little bit more. She's not as timid as she was in the first novel. Yeah, it's just a really fun manga series and I want to pick up the rest. There's like a lot of them, so it's kind of a commitment, but I'm really looking forward to it. All right, and that is it for my catch up, wrap up. I had a lot of books to talk about today because I have not done a wrap up in a while. I did feel like I had a little bit more fun filming this one because I just wasn't putting pressure on myself to say anything that like I didn't like anything too elaborate so i just said what i thought and it was fun uh, yeah let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books what you thought about them and that's it have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one